Hello student, I hope all of you are doing good. So good evening to all of you. We are going to start the session soon, but before that, please give me a feedback whether I am completely audible and visible to you or not. Okay, and then we are going to start the session directly. Hello, Dr. R.B. Hello, Dr. Aryan. I hope I am audible and visible to you clearly. Good evening, Dr. Kamaksi. Good evening, Dr. Nobody. Rising star. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation. So now <coughs> we are actually going to start the session. So as you know, ki we are discussing the important previous year questions which has been asked in uh, foreign medical graduate examinations, and today we are going to discuss the last five year questions of physiology right so uh, in this session what we will do we will show you the questions we will discuss the answer but only the brief salient point the brief important points we are going to discuss we are not going to discuss the concept of the topic in this session because it will take whole long time and that much time is uh, I mean you cannot dedicate that much time at that point of time so we are only going to discuss the questions and their answer and related important things only great okay Chalo, let's start so good evening to all of you uh, namaste good evening right okay fine so we are going to start the session directly first question so this is question june 2018 question first we are going to discuss this year okay so very simple question I'm, i i believe all of you will be able to answer this question so please try to answer surfactant is secreted by which of the following <coughs> right so all of you know that whenever the question is coming about surfactant it is an important question but again it's a simple question so it is directly secreted by type 2 pneumocyte right okay very good so type 2 pneumocyte is surfactant now we also know that type 1 pneumocyte this is the cell which is responsible for diffusion of gases so diffusion of all the oxygen and carbon dioxide at the level of lung occurs through this type 1 pneumocyte cell right and the sartoli cell ledic cell this is not really related to the uh, lung uh, per se as if you know he, we are going to discuss the sartoli cell and ledic cell a little bit later okay so this is the first question answer is done next question is coming in front of you okay which of the following receptor mediate stretch reflex please tell me the answer okay so the question is here about the stretch reflex two important reflex you have to remember for your fmg examination one is stretch reflex and one is the inverse stretch reflex so stretch reflex okay and second one is the inverse okay stretch reflex so stretch reflex and inverse stretch reflex for the first one the receptor is nothing but your muscle spindle the receptor is nothing but your muscle spindle and for the second the inverse stretch reflex the receptor is nothing but golgi tendon organ right so please don't forget these two important information so here the answer of this question is obviously c that is a muscle spindle and many of you are giving the correct answer yes and as you know that for inverse stretch reflex golgi tendon organ is the receptor now there are certain few other questions which has already been asked from this muscle spindle and golgi tendon organ a very important one the muscle spindle is a receptor for detecting the length of the muscle and the velocity of the muscle so when the muscle length is increasing or if the length is changing constantly with time that is the velocity so muscle spindle is activated by length and velocity of muscle length and velocity of muscle no don't forget this important information and for golgi tendon organ we have to remember that golgi tendon organ is activated by 
increase tension at the muscle tendon right so increase tension at the level of muscle tendon this is the activator of the in uh, golgi tendon organ so golgi tendon organ generally it is located in the tendon the tendomuscular junction of the muscle and it is activated by tension rising tension within the muscle tendon right so very very important information but these are the single most important information that you have to remember from this area stretch reflex and inverse stretch reflex okay i hope hope all of you got it okay so i'm moving on to the next question let's see resting membrane potential of the nerve fiber is close to right so the question is close to i am telling you here you have to remember two important information one is if the question is close to rmp resting membrane potential is close to okay and resting membrane potential is equal to equal to right these two question two different question and dono ka answer bhi thoda sa different hai so suppose i am asking that rmp of nerve or neuron so rmp of the nerve fiber close to whenever this is the question your answer will be potassium your answer will be potassium and very good okay so your answer will be potassium but if i ask you the second question that rmp of the neuron is equal to so now i have to find out that what is the actual rmp of the neuron so we all know that rmp of the neuron is minus 70 millivolt all of you know this okay so rmp of the neuron is minus 70 millivolt equilibrium potential of which ion is equal to minus 70 your answer will be close chloride okay so this isoelectric potential is also known as equilibrium potential equilibrium potential right please note down so isoelectric potential is also known as equilibrium potential if the question is rmp of neuron is equal to equilibrium potential or isoelectric potential of which ion your answer will be chloride because chloride has an i mean chloride has an equilibrium potential of minus 70 millivolt got it so please note down that close to means your answer is always potassium but equal to if the neuron is there then it is chloride but same question i am asking another question similar type of question rmp of myocardium now my tissue is changed पहले हम लोग न्यूरॉन बोल रहे थे नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज आर एम पी ऑफ मायोकार्डियम इज इक्वल टू इक्वल टू इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल ऑफ हुई चैन अब इसका आंसर क्या होगा बताओ ओके सो आर एम पी ऑफ द मायोकार्डियम इज इक्वल टू इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल ऑफ हुई चैन सो आपको क्या पहले देखना होगा आपको पहले देखना होगा कि वॉट इज द आर एम पी ऑफ मायोकार्डियम बोलो आर एम पी ऑफ मायोकार्डियम इज हाउ मच आर एम पी ऑफ मायोकार्डियम हार्ड मसल वॉट इज द आर एम पी ऑफ माओकार्डियम आयन बाद में आएगा आप पहले बताओ आर एम पी ऑफ माओकार्डियम कितना होता है नॉर्मल वैल्यू कितना होता है ओके दैट इज माइनस नाइन्टी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड माइनस नाइन्टी मिली वर्ल्ड ग्रेट नाउ यू चूज वन आयन हुई हैज एन इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल हुई इज एग्जैक्टली माइनस नाइन्टी मिली वर्ल्ड इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल ऑफ हुई आयन इज माइनस नाइन्टी मिली वर्ल्ड इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल ऑफ हुई आयन इज माइनस नाइन्टी मिली वर्ल्ड equilibrium potential of chloride is minus 70 millivolt but equilibrium potential of which n is minus 90 millivolt potassium so again your answer is potassium 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 so please note down this is one of the important area so if your question is rmp of any cell whether it is neuron whether it is myocardium if the question is close to aag band karke answer marna hai potassium न्यूरॉन हो जाए माओकार्डियम हो जाए कोई भी सेल हो जाए इफ द आर एम पी इज क्लोज टू इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल ऑफ हुई चैन योर आंसर इज पोटासियम 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 बट वेन एवर इट इज क्वेश्चन इज आर एम पी इज इक्वल टू ओके क्लोज टू को छोड़ दो नाउ द आर एम पी इज इक्वल टू इक्वल टू मीन सेम टू सेम सेम टू सेम सो नाउ इक्वल टू क्वेश्चन मीन्स यू हैव टू लुक दैट वॉच टिश्यू दे आर आस्किंग वेदर दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट द न्यूरॉन और वेदर दे आर आस्किंग अबाउट माओकार्डियम If the question is neuron, then chloride, and if the question is myocardium, then again the answer is potassium. Did you get it? All of you, tell me whether you get this three important information or not. Very very important. Very very important. Mistake ho jata hai, silly mistake. Okay. So, batao. Sabko aage ye three point. Okay. So, RMP of any cells 
इज इक्वल टू आपका आंसर देखना होगा इक्वल टू मीन्स वेदर इट इज न्यूरॉन और माइकार्डियम इफ द न्यूरॉन इज देयर देन क्लोराइड इफ द माइकार्डियम इज देयर देन पोटासियम बट वेन एवर द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट क्लोज टू ऑल टिश्यू वेदर इट इज माइकार्डियम न्यूरॉन क्लोज टू मीन्स आंसर पोटासियम ही होगा ठीक है नाउ दिस इज द क्वेश्चन विच इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच हेज बीन आस्ट मल्टीपल टाइम इन योर एग्जाम राइट सो प्लीज बी प्रिपेयर फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन नाउ इफ द क्वेश्चन इज वाई पोटासियम इज द आंसर ऑफ दिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके देन योर आंसर इज दैट पोटासियम इज द मैगजिमम पार्मिएबल आयन थ्रू सेल मेम्रेन पोटासियम इज द मैगजिमम पार्मिएबल आयन थ्रू सेल मेम्रेन इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन बहुत लोग सोडियम 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 यहाँ पे रिप्लाई दे रहे थे सोडियम इज वेरी वेरी इम्पार्मेबल इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन वेन द टीशू इज जेनरेटिंग एक्शन पोटेंशियल देन सोडियम विल बी वेरी वेरी पार्मेबल बट वेन द सेल इज इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन सोडियम इज नॉट द मोस्ट पार्मेबल आयन हुई चैन इज द मैक्सिमम पार्मेबल पोटासियम सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इफ अनदर क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग वेयर दे आर आस्किंग मैक्सिमम पार्मिएबल मैक्सिमम पार्मिएबल आयन इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन ऑफ द सेल इन रेस्टिंग कंडीशन ऑफ द सेल एगेन योर आंसर इज पोटासियम सो देखो इसलिए पोटासियम सब जगह में आता है राइट right? बहुत जगह में पोटासियम आंसर बट इफ द क्वेश्चन इज मैक्सिमम पार्मिएबल आयन मैक्सिमम पार्मिएबल आयन ड्यूरिंग एक्शन पोटेंशियल ड्यूरिंग एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑफ न्यूरॉन और माइकार्डियम नाउ आपका आंसर हो जाएगा सोडियम गिडी माई पॉइंट सो इन दे आर आस्किंग क्वेश्चन अबाउट मैक्सिमम पार्मिएबल आयन ड्यूरिंग एक्शन पोटेंशियल देन आपका आंसर हो जाएगा सोडियम बट रेस्टिंग कंडीशन मीन्स आपका आंसर पोटासियम ही रहेगा राइट ओके चलो बहुत डिस्कशन हो गया नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन में जाते वेरी गुड वेरी गुड यस ये आर यन यस डॉक्टर राइजिंग टर ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हुईच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग हॉर्मोन रेगुलेट ब्लड लेवल ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डाई हाइड्रोक्सी कोले कैल्सिफिरल पॉजिटिवली पॉजिटिवली राइट सो रेगुलेट द ब्लड लेवल ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डाई हाइड्रोक्सी कोले कैल्सिफिरल पॉजिटिवली मीन्स दे आर आस्किंग दैट हुईच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एक्टिवेट द वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डाई हाइड्रोक्सी कोले कैल्सिफिरल सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट विटामिन बी थ्री कोले कैल्सिफिरल इट हैज टू बेसिकल टू थ्री फॉर्मेट दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी कोले कैल्सिफिरल दिस इज द इनएक्टिव वन एंड वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डाई हाइड्रोक्सी कोले कैल्सिफिरल राइट सो दिस इज द मोस्ट एक्टिव फॉर्म ऑफ विटामिन डी थ्री एंड द एक्टिवेशन इज डन बाई आ हॉर्मोन दैट इज अ पैरा थाइरॉयड हॉर्मोन सो वेरी वेरी गुड हियर योर आंसर इज पैरा थाइरॉयड हॉर्मोन अदर हॉर्मोन हैज नो इफेक्ट ऑन एक्टिवेशन ऑफ दिस वाइटामिन डी थ्री राइट सो दैट्स वाई दे आर नॉट द आंसर ओके राइट सो दिस इज द आंसर पैराथायरॉयड हार्मोन यू हैव गिवन करेक्टली ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू आर गोइंग ओके सो हियर इज द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंटेरो पेप्टिडेड एंजाइम इज सिक्रेटेड बाय एट लीस्ट यू डू द पी ओ आई क्यू सो क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर देव इज आस्किंग सर कैन आई लीव फिजोलॉजी फॉर एफ एम जी एग्जामिनेशन एट लीस्ट यू डू द फॉर लास्ट फाइव ईयर एम सी क्यू सो दैट at least you will give uh, i mean you will give correct answer of some of the mcqs right completely chhod ke jana thoda sa mushkil ho jata hai kabhi kabhi uh, maybe uh, 12 to 18 questions being asked from physiology so that's why at least do the previous year question right so enteropeptidase enzyme is secreted by so it is not basically secreted by it is a brushed border enzyme present at the level of duodenal mucosa so this is the answer here is the duodenum so enteropeptidase ओके एंट्रोपेप्टिडेज एंजाइम इज प्रेजेंट एट द लेवल ऑफ ड्यूडिनम व्हिच कन्वर्ट ट्रिप्सिनोजन टू ट्रिप्सिन राइट ट्रिप्सिनोजन टू ट्रिप्सिन सो वी आर नॉट डिस्कसिंग मच ऑफ दिस बिकॉज दे इज अ सिंगल लाइन ऑन क्वेश्चन दैट एंट्रोपेप्टिडेज एंजाइम इज सिक्रेटेड बाय और प्रेजेंट एट व्हिच पार्ट राइट गेट इट ओके यस फिजियो इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ओनली यू शुड रीड नाउ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हिच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द बेस्ट स्टिमुलस फॉर रिलीज ऑफ वेसोप्रेसिन बेस्ट स्टिमुलस for the release of vasopressin so vasopressin is nothing but adh anti diuretic hormone right so all of you know that this anti diuretic hormone is released from which nucleus of hypothalamus okay could you name the nucleus 
ADH or vasopressin is released from which nucleus of hypothalamus. Although it is secreted from posterior pituitary, but ultimately it is synthesized at the level of hypothalamic nucleus and from there is descend down to the posterior pituitary. So, which nucleus? Supraoptic and paraventricular. So, supraoptic num, okay, supraoptic and paraventricular. These are the two nucleus, but supraoptic nucleus should come first. Supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei. Am I clear, Dr. Darshan? Right? So, supraoptic and paraventricular nucleus, these two nucleus, mainly it is supraoptic which is synthesizing the ADH. Now, who will give stimulation for ADH secretion? Your answer is osmoreceptor. So, another MCQ which has been asked is osmoreceptor, osmoreceptor. Whenever the osmoreceptor is stimulated, osmoreceptor is going to stimulate the supraoptic nucleus and supraoptic nucleus is going to produce ADH. So, bottom line is that if you stimulate this osmoreceptor by any means, then your ADH secretion will be increased. Now, where the osmoreceptor are located? This is a separate MCQ which has been asked previously. Where the uh, osmoreceptor are located? A line the andako osmoreceptor are located at the level of anterior nucleus of hypothalamus. Anterior nucleus of hypothalamus. And what are the stimulus for this osmoreceptor? The most potent stimulus for the osmoreceptor is obviously osmolality of your blood osmolality of your blood so whenever your blood osmolality is rising whenever your blood is becoming more osmolar or if there is increase in huge amount of sodium in your blood or if there is increase in angiotensin 2 in your blood these three name i have to remember that main stimulus for the osmoreceptor is osmolality apart from osmolality sodium is also a stimulus for osmoreceptor and angiotensin 2 is also a stimulus for osmoreceptor so whenever any of these three stimulus are present in your blood your osmoreceptor will be stimulated and osmoreceptor is going to stimulate the supraoptic nucleus of hypothalamus that is going to rise the adh level not only that this osmoreceptor also stimulate the thirst center thirst center which is located at the level of lateral hypothalamus that's why you know whenever your blood osmolality increases or whenever your blood contain huge amount of sodium or whenever your blood contain huge amount of angiotensin 2 the person feel thirsty you feel thirsty okay because not only the ADA secretion will be increased your thirst center will also be stimulated and you will feel thirsty right getting my point so all of you tell me whether you get this basic concept in this question or not so jabbi mera blood mein osmolality high ho jayega okay or mallo sodium is very very high in my blood okay or you are ingesting very huge amount of sodium okay salt so hum log kya karte we feel thirsty okay why you feel thirsty because the osmoreceptor stimulate the thirst center osmoreceptor also stimulate the supraoptic nucleus so supraoptic nucleus will produce adh adh will reabsorb water from the kidney and jab bhi aap kidney se water reabsorb karoge to aapka blood jo thick ho gaya tha wo dheere dheere thin ho jayega that is the basic concept that you have to remember here not clear so please note down that whenever your blood is guessing concentrated so whenever your blood osmolality is high osmolality is high it will stimulate the osmoreceptor at the level of anterior hypothalamus it will stimulate the adh secretion as well as it will also stimulate the thirst center thirst center right so that's why you will drink huge amount of water and ADH secretion will also increase so that's why i was telling that any condition if it is stimulate uh, the osmoreceptor like increase osmolality or increase sodium in the blood or increase angiotensin in the blood that will stimulate the thirst center as well as ADH secretion okay so in this question okay what will be the best answer so which of the following is the best stimulus for vasopressin release your answer will be okay so hypoosmolality is not my answer hypotension is not my answer hypertension is not my answer hypotonicity of the extracellular fluid okay so basically 
nothing is going to be my answer here because the this should be hypertonicity 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 of the okay hypertonicity so ye jo hypotonicity hai na it may be a printing mistake it should be hypertonicity otherwise nothing is answer in this question hypertension cannot so i cannot mark hypertension here only possible answer hypotension hypotension is indirect answer but better answer is the hypertonicity if hypertonicity is not there then hypotension you can say hypotension you can say because indirectly hypotension can releases angiotensin 2 okay so uh, that is a question but here the question is the best stimulus for vasopressin release only and only answer possible is hyper tonicity of the extracellular fluid but nothing is given so answer here is none basically here is none so see hypotonicity hypertension hypotension and hypoosmolality so do you think anything is going to be your answer answer is none because only and only answer possible is the increased tonicity or hypertonicity right otherwise kya hoga ki if you have to mark only one answer here suppose this is the question given and you have to mark only one answer hypertonicity is not there then kya hoga whenever there is severe hypotension you know it can indirectly releases increased amount of angiotensin 2 that can also releases ada secretion but this is not the best stimulus that's why i'm saying that in this question probably it's an wrong recall or maybe a printing mistake none is the answer okay but you look at the concept ki what you have to remember you have to remember the hypertonicity or hyperosmolality of the extracellular fluid got it okay chalo so next question we are again yes hypertonicity is the answer if not then hypotension okay now this is one of the easiest question in this session i believe electrical impulses of the heart originate in so sa node is the direct answer i am not going to take answer from you i know you will be able to answer okay very good okay next question inhibin is secreted by sa node is done now next question answer karo this question inhibin is secreted by okay so now we have to answer, uh, uh, remember the functions of the ledig cell and the sertoli cell okay okay very good very good so this ledig cell is responsible for secretion of testosterone and sertoli cell is responsible for secretion of inhibin right so answer here is the sertoli cell okay and where will you get this peg cell interstitial cell is the ledig cell is also interstitial cell but could you tell me the location of peg cell where you find peg cell remember fallopian tube right so peg cell is found at the level of fallopian tube okay i i got it i got it ki your answer is sertoli cell secret inhibin that is done i am asking peg cell where did you find peg cell fallopian tube okay got it okay exactly very good now we look at uh, this sertoli cell ledig cell functions is one of the important topic in your fmg exam so please try to remember this important information which is written on this slide sartoli cell number 1 it forms blood testis barrier jaisa hum bolte hai na blood brain barrier so similarly at the level of testis also there is a barrier blood testis barrier which for, which cells form the blood testis barrier sartoli cell okay second sartoli cell contain receptor for fsh means fsh stimulate the sartoli cell okay and this ledig cell is stimulated by lh lh stimulate the ledig cell okay then sartoli cell produce inhibin inhibin and ledig cell produce testosterone then this inhibin has negative feedback effect on fsh and this testosterone has negative feedback effect on lh so this is the sequence okay so sartoli cell has receptor for fsh when fsh is stimulating the sartoli cell sartoli cell is going to produce a number of product not only inhibin but also mullerian inhibitory 
substances. This has also been asked in FMG exam. So please remember, Sartoli cell not only produce inhibin, it also produce mullerian inhibitory substances. Okay, anti-mullerian hormone jis ko bolte hain, as well as androgen binding protein. So please remember these three name. Okay, number one, androgen binding protein, mullerian inhibitory substances, and inhibin. Okay, along with that. Sartoli cell also forms blood testis barrier and it is stimulated by hormone FSH and it contain one enzyme aromatase that is also important. On the other end, you remember Leydig cell, it produces testosterone and Leydig cell is stimulated by which hormone? LH. So obviously the receptor for LH has to be present on Leydig cells. Am I clear? So this much of important information you have to remember about these two cells, Sartoli cell and Leydig cell. I have seen many questions in FMG is coming from this topic, Sartoli and Leydig cell. Got it? Okay, chalo. Next question. Center controlling vomiting. So direct answer to this question, vomiting center is nothing but this area prostima, right? So this area prostima is an circumventricular organ, I hope all of you know. Now apart from this area prostima, if you look at the amniotic center and uh, pneumotaxic center, ye dono center ka bhi aap function de rakho. So amniotic center is responsible for controlling the, it controls the depth of breathing, depth of breathing, right? It controls the depth of breathing and pneumotaxic center, it control the, it controls the rate of breathing. Right? So these two centers are responsible for control of your respiration. Although we are not discussing respiration here, but if I ask you which center is known as the pacemaker of respiration, it may come as an MCQ in your question. Pacemaker of respiration is which center? That is the pre-Bordzinger complex. Pre-Bordzinger complex. No, not DRG. Oh, sub change ho gaya. pre bordzinger complex, not the Bordzinger, pre bordzinger complex. So this is known as a pacemaker of respiration. Just a hard me pacemaker hota hai, is not respiratory pacemaker hota hai, pre bordzinger complex. So pre bordzinger complex, it can produce, it can start your inspiration and expiration of respiration. But if you want to increase the rate of the respiration, or if you want to increase the depth of the respiration, then you require the help of this tooth center. Amniotic is for depth and pneumotaxic is for rate controlling, okay? And here the question is vomiting center, our answer is area prostima, right? So area prostima is also known as chemoreceptor trigger zone, okay, CTZ. I hope aapka pharmacology mein jarur bola hoga ki this area prostima, which is a vomiting center, this is also known as chemoreceptor trigger zone, right? And where it is located, it is located in the medulla, dorsal surface of the medulla of Langata and I told you that this is a kind of circumventricular organ. So this three line you remember about area prostima or say chemoreceptor trigger zone. Got it? Great. Next question we are going. So next question is prothrombin to thrombin conversion required. I hope this is one of the easiest question that whenever blood coagulation pathway is coming into question, one important ions are required for activation of many factor, even if you don't remember prothrombin to thrombin conversion and that ion is nothing but the calcium ion. Great. Okay. So all of you will give correct answer, I know, but look at this. Generally what happens that prothrombin to thrombin conversion is done by this factor 10, factor 10. So Whenever factor 10 is active, that active factor 10 can activate prothrombin to thrombin. Don't go into the detail of this thing right now, but you remember that during this pathway, you remember one important ion that is the calcium ion is also required for this activation. That's all you have to remember that calcium is one of the important ion for activation of many coagulation factor. Now next question about the cardiac cycle. Cardiac event at the end of isovolemic relaxation phase, okay. Isovolemic relaxation phase and isovolemic contraction phase. These two phase are very, very important. So isovolemic relaxation phase, okay. Iska surubad hota hai, iska beginning hota hai. Starting of the isovolemic relaxation phase and ending of isovolemic relaxation phase, two important events happen. Please note down. 
isovolemic relaxation phase beginning of the isovolemic relaxation phase will start whenever there is closure of okay whenever there is closure of semilunar valves okay so whenever there is closure of closure of semilunar valves then that will start the isovolemic relaxation phase okay and at the end of the isovolemic relaxation phase there will be opening of atrioventricular valves getting my point so please please note down whenever the question is coming about isovolemic relaxation phase this is very important isovolemic relaxation phase means ventricle is relaxing and the blood volume within the ventricle is not changing that's why this is isovolemic relaxation phase beginning of the isovolemic relaxation phase start with closure of the semilunar valve so closure of the semilunar valve means which heart sound is going to be produced second heart sound so please note down that if the question is second heart sound occurs in which phase of the cardiac cycle your answer will be at the start of isovolemic relaxation phase and at the end of the isovolemic relaxation phase there will be opening of the av valves so obviously in this question my answer is direct that is the atrioventricular valves open up that is the answer in in this question but along with this also remember isovolemic contraction phase isovolemic contraction phase right so isovolemic contraction phase is the first part of the systole when the heart is starting its contraction systole first phase is the isovolemic contraction phase at the start of the isovolemic contraction phase at the start of the isovolemic contraction phase there will be closure of there will be closure of av valves atrioventricular valves right and at the end of this isovolemic contraction phase there will be opening of there will be opening of semilunar valves getting my point so please please note down that whenever i am saying that closure exactly closure of the av valve means this is nothing but this is going to produce the fast heart sound so if my if i my question is that first heart sound occur in which phase of cardiac cycle your answer will be at the beginning of systole at the beginning of systole means which phase of cardiac cycle that is the isovolemic contraction phase beginning of the isovolemic contraction phase will produce the first heart sound and beginning of the isovolemic relaxation phase will produce the second heart sound so this is the extra point that you have to remember got it okay so aage badhte this is the next question question number okay i think 15 so the adrenal medulla is derived from neural crest a long description is given this description is not required to answer the question although okay cluster of chromaffin cells become distinct medulla the simple question is adrenal medulla secretes which of the following and everybody knows the answer that adrenal medulla secretes your catecholamines epinephrine not epinephrine right great so answer here is epinephrine okay so please note down the important hormones produced by different layers of the adrenal gland i hope all of you know but quick revision zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata zona reticularis these are the three layers of the adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla produce this epinephrine and not epinephrine right so here it is also written and epinephrine is maximum 90% cases it is epinephrine and only 10% is a not epinephrine and you also have to remember that zona glomerulosa is responsible for production of the aldosterone mineralocorticoid zona fasciculata is for cortisol and zona reticularis is the sex steroid okay so if you go from the superficial the deep, deep layer zona glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis so the glomerulosa is responsible for maintenance of your salt balance salt aldosterone okay what it is going to do it is going to maintain the sodium balance salt okay then fasciculata which hormone it is producing cortisol cortisol is going to med mediate the regulation of your blood sugar okay so first layer is responsible for salt regulation second layer is for sugar regulation and the third layer is regulation of your sexual behavior so salt sugar sex okay remember like this gfr if you go from superficial to deeper layer salt sweet sex 
okay so this way the three layers is producing three important hormones and this is given in this chapter but for the timing you just remember single single name okay different layers and the hormone okay next question so the next question here is renin is secreted by again very important question but again it's a very simple question for you so here there will be a confusion if the question is rather than renin if the question is sometime erythropoietin erythropoietin so renin and erythropoietin both are produced from kidney okay so for the renin your answer is obviously the jg cell your answer is obviously the jg cell juxta glomerular cell there is no confusion about this okay jg cell but whenever the question is about erythropoietin could anybody tell me the answer what is the answer of erythropoietin which cell produce erythropoietin your answer will be peritubular peri tubular capillary cells peritubular capillary cell not the macular denser that's why i'm telling you that uh, confusion can happen it's not the macular denser macular denser is not going to secrete this hormone macular denser is a chemosensor cell macular denser is a chemoreceptor cell so please remember because you are having a confusion so macular denser is a chemoreceptor cell chemoreceptor cell it can senses sodium it can also senses chloride sodium and chloride sensor that's why this is known as a okay chemosensor cell but whenever the question is erythropoietin erythropoietin is produced by peritubular capillary epithelium cell and erythropoietin stimulate rbc production by stimulating the stem cell but there was a question in neat entrance examination that erythropoietin stimulate which stem cell in the rbc series your answer is colony forming unit erythroblast this is the main cell where erythropoietin gives is stimulation so erythropoietin is secreted from peritubular capillary cells of kidney after secretion it is going to produce increase amount of rbc in your blood but how it is going to produce increase amount of rbc by stimulating the stem cells of rbc stem cells means which stem cell you are talking about colony forming unit erythroblast colony forming unit erythroblast that is a main cell am i clear all of you tell me whether you get this important information clearly or not okay this will come in future okay maybe this time they are going to ask you this question cpu colony forming unit erythroblast okay very good okay renin whenever there is a hypotension hypotension is a stimulus for the renin secretion whenever the bp is less hypotension is a stimulus for this renin secretion right and what renin is going to produce renin is not going to do directly anything okay renin ultimately will produce the angiotensin 2 huge amount of angiotensin 2 and that angiotensin will produce vasoconstriction and that will raise your blood pressure not only that angiotensin will also produce aldosterone which will absorb sodium and that will raise your blood pressure so whenever your blood pressure is less okay your jg cell will be stimulated and jg cell will produce renin that renin will ultimately produce the angiotensin 2 you know the angiotensin ozone then angiotensin 1 then angiotensin 2 and that angiotensin 2 is going to rise your blood pressure okay so this is in brief that you have to remember here fine and what is the stimulus for this erythropoietin secretion i told that hypotension is a stimulus for renin secretion but if i ask you what is the stimulus for erythropoietin secretion tell me you know that if you uh, ascend into high altitude high altitude to aapka erythropoietin production badh jata hai rbc number badh jata hai kyu high altitude mein kya hota hai not anemia the direct answer will be hypoxia okay hypoxia is the best answer theek hai so very good so hypoxia is a stimulus for erythropoietin secretion erythropoietin is going to increase your rbc count by stimulating colony forming unit erythroblast at least you remember this simple simple line okay now next question peristalsis is the question here peristalsis is a series of wave like muscle contraction many things has been given but ultimately the question is not about peristalsis look at here which factor is responsible for increasing gastric 
motility which factor is responsible for increasing gastric motility so the question here is about the gastric motility so this is stomach okay so this is the location of the pyloric sphincter pyloric sphincter yes yes so pyloric sphincter if you cause relaxation of the pyloric sphincter so whenever there is relaxation of the pyloric sphincter then the gastric motility will be increased this will increase the motility of the stomach increase the motility of the stomach okay now relaxation of the pyloric sphincter is done by a hormone which is known as the gastrin and whenever there is distension of this stomach whenever there is distension of this stomach this distension will produce a hormone which is nothing but gastrin and gastrin is going to relaxes the pyloric sphincter and whenever you relax the pyloric sphincter the motility of the stomach will be enhances get my point so that way in this question distension of the stomach is the answer now what about the others the presence of fatty food presence of amino acid presence of acid in the stomach so whenever there is presence of huge amount of fatty food acid or um, your amino acid in the stomach or duodenum it will produce contraction of the pyloric sphincter it will produce contraction of the pyloric sphincter by a reflex mechanism okay so whenever you contract the pyloric sphincter your gastric motility will be decreased okay so that's why here the question is which is going to increase the gastric motility i'm going to mark the distension of the stomach because that will produce gastrin okay yes very good chalo next question so next question we are discussing the december 2018 question so see um, uh, june 2018 many question has been asked from physiology okay now the number of questions are little less 12 to 14 caspers but june 2018 mein uh, there was around 18 to 20 question has been asked from uh, physiology okay now here among the following option which of them is present in least concentration in the intracellular fluid yes again your answer is calcium okay so maximum is potassium we know but calcium concentration is very 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 high in the extracellular fluid and very very less in the intracellular fluid okay so i'll show you one diagram from guyton so this is the diagram from guyton okay so see here as you know sodium is very high in the extracellular fluid okay and potassium is very high in the intracellular fluid potassium is very high in the intracellular fluid but if you look at the calcium here see calcium extracellular fluid is 2.4 milli equivalent per liter 2.4 milli equivalent per liter and intracellular fluid 0.0001 milli equivalent per liter means very very less isliye the intracellular content of calcium is very 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 less that's why calcium has to enter from the extracellular fluid for contraction of the cell or calcium has to release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum for contraction of the muscle that's why you know ki in the cytoplasm free calcium is very less so you have to release calcium so where from you can get the calcium either you have to take the calcium from extracellular fluid or you can take the calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum and that's why we know that during muscle contraction calcium has to be released from this sarcoplasmic reticulum for onset of contraction okay and in cardiac muscle you require outside calcium also calcium has to enter from extracellular to intracellular fluid for cardiac muscle contraction okay but for skeletal muscle sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium is required okay so this way remember that calcium is very very less in the intracellular fluid okay next question resistance against passive stretch resistance again passive stretch this is a basically practical question in practical physiology suppose um, you are moving the arm of a patient okay you are a doctor you are moving the arm of a patient okay and during whenever you are moving the arm of this patient you are feeling some kind of resistance at the level of muscle but patient is not moving his arm you are moving and patient is just relaxing you are moving so this is known as passive passive not the active stretch passive stretch means you are stretching the hand of a patient and during this stretching you are getting some kind of resistance at the level of muscle this is known as the 
tone muscle tone right so resistance against passive stretch is known as tone okay tone is the answer here all of you know that this spasticity rigidity peritoneal all these are the hypertonic state of the muscle when muscle tone is very very high muscle tone is very very high then we use this kind of term spasticity rigidity generally spasticity is due to problem of the pyramidal tract okay and rigidity is due to extra pyramidal tract lesion so all of you know that pyramidal tract lesion or extra pyramidal tract lesion they are the part of the upper motor neuron lesion so whenever there is a kind of upper motor neuron lesion okay the tone muscle tone increases and for the lower motor neuron lesion muscle tone decreases muscle tone decreases so when muscle tone increases we use this terms spasticity and rigidity if the muscle tone is increased due to pyramidal tract lesion then the spasticity word is used if the muscle tone is increased due to extra pyramidal tract lesion then rigidity term is used and peritonea is also a kind of increased resistance but it is variable increased resistance during movement of the arm okay so this is the thing that you have to remember resistance again passive stretch is tone okay and tone increases in upper motor neuron lesion decreases in lower motor neuron lesion at least you remember this important line in your brain okay now next again the same question which i have already discussed enterokinase is an activator of i told you already enterokinase is present at the level of duodenum it convert trypsinogen to trypsin so activator of trypsinogen trypsinogen is inactive it will be activated to trypsin okay moving on to next okay which structure connect the broca area with that of the wernicke area okay now ye question pe aa jao broca to wernicke area so all of you know that these two area broca's area and the wernicke's area these two are the important area for our speech language right so wernicke area is known as a sensory area for speech sensory and broca is known as the motor area of speech right so i am speaking continuously broca area is helping in this speaking power and whenever you are putting some chat in this chat box i am understanding that chat that is a sensory okay one area is going to understand that thing suppose you are asking some question i have to understand that what are you asking then i will be able to speak so this understanding part is done at the level of one area sensory area for speech and when i am speaking after understanding okay after understanding i have to give reply answer so which area is helping motor area broca's area right and the connection between these two is known as the arcuate fascicular so this is a typical diagram which is given in genom so as you can find out here that the connection between this broca's and this wernicke's area this is the connection this is known as the arcuate fasciculus right so answer of this question is nothing but the arcuate fasciculus a all of you have given correct answer great very good thank you so much chalo next question so next question is here calcium binding protein are the protein that participate in calcium cell signaling pathway which of the following is not a calcium binding protein so look at the question which of the following is not a calcium binding protein this is a little bit tricky question i believe but all of you will be able to answer so answer here is clathrin where have you read about clathrin what is clathrin so only one line i have to remember about clathrin clathrin is a protein which helps in endocytosis process endocytosis process the process where the clathrin is going to help is known as the receptor mediated receptor mediated endocytosis very good receptor mediated endocytosis is done by the clathrin protein it is not related to your calcium balance very good dr um, chandani right okay so this is receptor mediated endocytosis suppose there are receptor on the cell membrane you have to endocytose those receptor the clathrin is going to help you 
other than this this cal binding is a calcium binding protein which is increased in presence of vitamin D3 right suppose we all know that vitamin D3 increases calcium absorption from GIT vitamin D3 increases calcium absorption from proxima I mean uh, renal system also kidney also okay so whenever vitamin D is increasing calcium absorption in the kidney at the level of GIT it enhances one calcium binding protein and that is known as the cal binding protein calmodulin is the calcium binding protein which is very very important for your MCQ it is present in which type of muscle smooth muscle and troponin is also a calcium binding protein it is present in skeletal muscles <coughs> as well as it is also present in myocardium great skeletal muscle as well as myocardium dono mein hota hai troponin calcium binding protein okay so troponin i hope all of you know calmodulin you have to remember smooth muscle and cal binding is the calcium binding protein where calcium absorption is happening like git and kidney and clathrin is receptor mediated endocytosis so we are moving on to the next question here histamine is secreted by again i am not taking much of the time so basically histamine is secreted by enterochromaffin like cell not the enterochromaffin cell per se but here i will go for this enterochromaffin cell but actual answer should be enterochromaffin like cell endochromaffin like cell right so all of you know histamine is secreted by endochromaffin like cell so this parietal cell or oxygenic cell all of you know this is the same thing which is going to produce hcl and intrinsic factor and this chip cell which is also known as the peptic cell this chip cell or peptic cell is going to produce the pepsinogen right so all of you know this next question reward center in the brain important tricky question so this question is difficult so if this kind of questions are coming then they are the difficult but otherwise other question that we are discussing that are the very simple simple question so reward center in the brain you have to remember that medial forebrain bundle medial forebrain bundle this is number one number two is the ventral tegmental area tegmental area these two name you have to remember okay no 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 amygdala is not the reward center okay amygdala is the center for emotion okay amygdala is the center for emotion although it has some role in reward center but it is not the actual reward center your answer is medial forebrain bundle that is the first choice if it is not there then ventral tegmental area will be the answer right or this amygdala is responsible for controlling the emotion and the fear response of the person emotion fear response of the person okay so amygdala is responsible for this thalamus is the relation to the multiple ascending and descending part hypothalamus has many role okay but ventral tegmental area is the answer in this question okay so medial forebrain bundle hippocampus hippocampus is the main center which is responsible for the memory hippocampus ka naam hum logo kyu dhyan rakhna hai it is responsible for short term to long term memory conversion short term to long term memory conversion memory conversion is done at the level of hippocampus okay so short term to long term memory conversion is at the level of hippocampus and if the question is long term memory long term memory is stored at which part of the brain your answer will be new cortex new cortex right recent memory is uh, this hippocampus and anterior nucleus of hypothalamus that is a part of the recent memory yes so obviously you can also say hippocampus is a part of that right so hippocampus we say generally it is a part of short term to long term memory conversion right and long term memory will be stored at the level of your neocortex right so these are part of the vapid circuit whatever you are saying hypo hippocampus amygdala hippocampus then anterior nucleus of thalamus okay para hippocampal gyrus they are the part of the vapid circuit okay so the whole vapid circuit is responsible for controlling your emotion your fear response your recent memory okay but we have to remember the individual nucleus and their function so that way these are the important thing that you have to remember okay okay got it everybody so here the answer is the better answer is the ventral tegmental area fine chalo 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो ग्लूकोज इज एब्सॉर्ब बाय व्हिच पार्ट ऑफ द नेफ्रॉन सो दिस इज वेरी सिंपल ग्लूकोज एब्जॉर्प्शन 100 परसेंट ग्लूकोज एब्जॉर्प्शन 100 परसेंट ग्लूकोज एब्जॉर्प्शन ऑकर्स एट द लेवल ऑफ प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल्स प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल राइट प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल है टू पार्ट ओके अपर पार्ट और द फर्स्ट पार्ट एंड द सेकेंड पार्ट ओके सेकेंड पार्ट फर्स्ट पार्ट इज नोन एज द प्रोक्सिमल कॉन्वुलेटेड टिब्यूल्स एंड सेकेंड पार्ट इज नोन एज द प्रोक्सिमल स्ट्रेट टिब्यूल्स प्रोक्सिमल कॉन्वुलेटेड टिब्यूल्स रिअब्जर्व नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लूकोज एंड प्रोक्सिमल स्ट्रेट टिब्यूल रिअब्जर्व रिमेनिंग टेन परसेंट ऑफ द ग्लूकोज exactly that we are going to discuss so pct so obviously here your answer is upper part of the pct actually proximal part of the pct they mean to say here so upper part of the pct means that is the first part of the pct that is going to reabsorb 90% of the total glucose which is filtrated and the transporter which is present here is the sglt2 and in the proximal straight tubule the transporter is sglt type 1 so please note down that kidney or nephron contain both the type of sglt sglt2 as well as sglt1 but sglt2 is mainly present at the level of proximal part of the nephron and the proximal tubule ka second part contain the sglt type 1 <coughs> exactly sometimes if the question is hard na then you can get this kind of question otherwise sglt is enough but sglt2 is the maximum glucose reabsorption and sglt1 is less glucose reabsorption okay anyway at least you remember sglt and proximal tubule first part of the proximal tubule got it okay chalo next question sperm remain in epididymis so here the question is sperm remain in epididymis the exact answer is 12 to 12 to 26 days 12 to 26 days so this hour is not up appropriate here okay so whenever the sperms is entering in the epididymis within 24 hour it is going to be motile okay but if the question is for how many days it is going to stay in the epididymis your answer is 12 to 26 days so 12 to 26 days means yahan pe basically hamara answer hona chahiye 24 days 12 to 26 mein aana jo aa raha hai that is a 12 to 26 days okay hour nahi okay if you look at books within hours within 24 hours sperm will get its motility when it is entering in the epididymis so please note down few important information what about i have to remember about sperm so sperm acquire its motility and the maturation of the sperms occur inside the epididymis first line very very crucial mcq for your exam okay it has been asked multiple times if the question is in which region sperm gets its motility it gets its motility inside the epididymis maturation of the sperm also occur inside the epididymis for how many days sperm is going to stay inside epididymis 12 to 26 days and it become motile within first 24 hours so if the question is when the sperm is getting motile within how many hours then your answer is 24 hours okay but for how many days sperm staying inside the epididymis your answer is 12 to 26 days get my point so please please note down this important information now second question that they are asking is capacitations of the sperm capacitations is a process where sperm become hypermotile just before fertilization so if the question is capacitations of the sperm occur where your answer ki after ejaculation capacitations of the sperm will happen so inside female genital tract inside cervix capacitations is going to happen so please note down if the question is motility if the question is maturation epididymis is the answer but if the question is capacitations then your answer is female genital tract other question they have been asked from uh, this sperm region is the sperm count normally hota hai 100 million per ml in the semen velocity of the sperm hota hai 1 to 4 mm per minute and the life expect and expectancy of the sperm in the female genital tract is 1 to 2 days all this information are taken from guyton textbook of physiology so you can rely on this information okay so this question has been already asked that what is the speed of sperm 
inside female genital tract after ejaculation. The answer is 1 to 4 millimeter per minute. The other information that you have to remember about sperms is given here. Okay? So, this is the answer of the question. Okay. Next question. What mediate inverse stretch reflex? So, I am not taking time here because we have already discussed that inverse stretch reflex is nothing but Golgi tendon organ that we have already discussed in the previous question. Acrosomal reaction also occurs in the female genital tract just before entry into the ovum, just before entry into the ovum. The cap which is there in the head of the sperm, they will release as enzymes and that will help in the penetration of the sperm into the ovum that is acrosomal reaction. That is also going to happen in the female genital tract obviously fallopian tube because fertilization is going to happen there. Okay. So, uh, that is the uh, very good question. Okay. Aprosomal reaction is different from capacitations. Capacitations is the first the sperm will be hyper motile. Okay. Initially, after ejaculation, sperm is not very motile. Although it is acquired motility is already there, but it is not hyper motile. So, hyper motile, then it will reach to the ovum and then acrosomal reaction and then fertilization. Okay. Now, here so, which mediate inverse stretch reflex? Your answer is Golgi tendon organ, uh, sorry, Golgi tendon organ, yes, that we have already discussed. So, now I am not taking time here. Okay, now here, delivery of stimulus above threshold intensity, <coughs> above threshold intensity leads to constant amplitude action potential. What is the meaning of this? That if you stimulate, suppose I am giving stimulation again and again, what I am getting? I am getting action potential, but the height of this action potential is remaining same to same. Height of the action potential is not changing. This is nothing but your all or null law. All or null law. Okay? So, <clears throat> if your stimulus is adequate, what is the meaning of this stimulus above the threshold intensity? This is the adequate stimulus. Adequate stimulus which is able to produce action potential. Yes. Okay. So, whenever you are giving adequate stimulus, action potential will happen and that will happen with a maximum amplitude. So, this is your all or none law. Got it? Great. Next question. Which part of the thalamus is related to motor control? So, here two things. If the question is sensory control, sensory control, which part of the thalamus is responsible for sensory control? Your answer will be this. Ventro Postero medial nucleus BP, <coughs> BPL and VPM. Okay. Means all the ascending tracts which are going from your body surface to your brain, it is going through thalamus. When it is going through thalamus, from which nucleus, through which nucleus it is going? BPL and VPM. So these are the nucleus which is related to sensory. But here the question is about the motor. Okay. Which nucleus of thalamus is responsible for motor control? Your answer is ventrolateral and ventroanterior. Ventrolateral and ventroanterior nucleus. So, here your answer will be ventrolateral nucleus of thalamus is the best answer in this question. Great. Very good answer. Next question. Active form of vitamin D3. We just discussed that active form of vitamin D3 is 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol, cholecalciferol which is also known as calcitriol, which is also known as calcitriol. Not the B, calciferol is the general term, calciferol is the general term of vitamin D, 125 dry hydroxy cholecalciferol is also known as calcitriol, calcitriol, right? Argocalciferol, you know, this is the source, plant source of vitamin D3. Okay, cholecalciferol is also the vitamin D, but it is not the active. Active is the calcitriol, 125-dihydroxy cholecalciferol. Okay, so this is the answer that you have to remember. Next question, tyrosine kinase receptor. This is one of the important area, which is a little bit difficult. Tyrosine kinase receptor. You have to remember certain hormone which act through tyrosine kinase receptor. And the most important hormone that you should not forget is the insulin, tyrosine kinase receptor. Which hormone I have to remember? Insulin, insulin, insulin. So, look at this table. Okay. So, please look at this table, everybody. Tyrosine kinase receptor. Okay. Tyrosine kinase receptor. What are the hormones? Insulin, insulin-like growth factor, 
epidermal growth factor and nerve growth factor, neuron growth factor, nerve growth factor. All these hormones act through tyrosine kinase receptor. But sometimes they also ask that what pathway this receptor is going to activate it. So tyrosine kinase receptor can activate the MAP kinase pathway also. It can also activate the rash RAP pathway also. You may not remember this detail, okay? But if you able to remember, please try it because if the question is difficult, they can ask you that which hormone act through MAP kinase pathway. Your answer insulin and IGF. Insulin IGF they are tyrosine kinase receptor, but tyrosine kinase activate a pathway inside the cell. Which pathway? MAP kinase pathway. That is for insulin and insulin like growth factor 1. And for EGF and NGF, the pathway is known as the RAS, rash and RAP. Okay, you don't have to remember the full name, but rash and RAP is adequate enough to remember. Now, apart from this, one of the important information from here, JAK start pathway, which has already been asked in your MCQ, JAK start pathway is activated by which hormone? Growth hormone and prolactin. So, growth hormone, remember, 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 growth hormone and prolactin, they act through JAK start pathway. Not only that, another hormone that is the leptin, it also act through the JAK start pathway. Then, right? Okay, Jack start pathway, then another J A K S T A T, Jack start pathway, that is the leptin, growth hormone, prolactin. Okay, Ajayak MCQ. Baki jo hai, you may or may not remember, but this is also has been asked multiple times in your question that <coughs> atrial natriuretic peptide, okay, endothelium derived relaxation factor and nitric oxide, J act through CGMP pathway. Yes, that is the genus kinase pathway, Jack pathway. Okay. Okay, so this you may also have to remember because it has also been asked in MCQs. Okay, chalo. Next, so correct statement about solute excretion in water diuresis. So, when water diuresis is going on, water is released in huge amount in your urine with a fixed amount of solute. So, there are basically two types of diuretic. One is osmotic diuresis and one is water diuresis. Water diuresis means ADH is less, huge amount of water is excreted in the urine. In these cases, solute excretion will be fixed in amount. That's why if the question is correct statement about solute excretion in water diuresis, when water is excreted in huge amount, what is the amount of solute excreted in that water? The solute amount is very less, but that is fixed. So, that remain unchanged is best answer in this. First increases, then decreases, aise kuch baat nahi hai, okay. It is always remain unchanged. Water diuresis means excess water is released in the urine along with a very minute or fixed amount of solute. That is water diuresis that you have to remember. Got it? Okay. So, D is one of the correct answer that is possible here. Chalo. In case a small stimulus causes more pain, okay. Ab batao iska answer kya hai. If a small stimulus causes a more pain, okay. So I am giving a little stimulus, but you are feeling huge amount of pain, severe pain. Little stimulus, it is going to produce pain, but this pain is not very high. But you are feeling huge amount of pain. This is known as hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia. And what is allodynia? Allodynia is when you are giving a different stimulus which is not going to produce pain, which is not going to produce pain. Generally, this pain production nahi karta, ye stimulus. Suppose I have to touch de raun, touch. But this touch de ke baad aapko pain feel ho raha hai. To alter ho gaya na. So this is known as allodynia. So we say that when you are giving innocuous stimulus, innocuous means not painful, not harmful stimulus. Innocuous stimulus you are giving, but the person is feeling pain, then that is known as allodynia. So, hyperalgesia is very severe kind of pain, okay, okay, in little amount of pain stimulus and allodynia is, stimulus is not painful, but person is feeling huge amount of pain that is allodynia, right, exactly, vibration, touch, yes, so, ye dono term aapko dhyan okay, one is hyperalgesia, that is 
huge amount of pain perception in response to a little stimulus and allodynia means when you are giving a uh, innocuous stimulus where the person is feeling pain right chalo next question what is the cause of dichrotic notch so dichrotic notch this is found at the level of aortic pressure curve so this is a kind of aortic pressure curve when the heart is contracting when the heart is pumping blood will be ejected in the arch of aorta and the pressure in the arch of aorta will be increased so this is known as the percussion wave percussion wave okay then what will happen this pressure in the arch of aorta will start decreasing but suddenly there will be a notch and this notch is known as dichrotic notch this dichrotic notch is the point when the second heart sound is going to happen and we all know second heart sound is going to happen means this is nothing but closer of this is nothing but closer of semilunar valve so that's why this closer of the semilunar valves is responsible for this dichrotic notch okay detailed discussion is not possible here otherwise this topic is a little time consuming topic but for the timing you remember dichrotic notch is corresponding with second heart sound that's all okay next question <clears throat> which of the following is correct regarding isovolemic relaxation okay isovolemic relaxation bolo kya answer hona chahiye we have already discussed isovolemic relaxation means all the valves in the hearts are closed c wave in the jbb that will be produced when the heart is contracting against isovolemic contraction phase c wave in the jbb is seen during isovolemic contraction phase contraction phase right iso what ka meaning hota hai when all the valves are closed previously we have discussed isovolemic relaxation ka beginning hota hai closer of the semilunar valves and at the end there will be opening but during the whole duration of this isovolemic contraction or isovolemic relaxation whenever the what is iso iso phase means all the valves in the hearts are closed so ab valves are also closed semilunar valves are also closed semilunar valve closed hone ke baad hi isovolemic relaxation shuru hota hai but ab valve already closed state mein hota hai isliye all the isovolemic contraction or isovolemic relaxation means all the valves are closed okay otherwise there is a little confusion here but c wave in the jbp is produced during isovolemic contraction phase not during isovolemic relaxation phase got it so this is the answer next question adequate oxygen delivery at the cellular level occur in which type of hypoxia okay so there are four types of hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia means there will be decrease in partial pressure of oxygen in the blood so what will happen to the oxygen delivery at the level of tissue it will also decrease theek okay? hai anemic hypoxia means hemoglobin is less so what will happen to the oxygen delivery it will also decrease stagnant hypoxia means okay the blood flow is blood flow is less so obviously if the blood is not going to the tissue then oxygen delivery will also decrease to the tissue but in histotoxic hypoxia you know that there is no problem in the partial pressure of oxygen no problem in the hemoglobin no problem in the oxygen delivery to the tissue but problem is that histotoxic hypoxia generally occurs in case of cyanide poisoning okay cyanide poisoning so what happens in cyanide poisoning the tissue or the cell is dead and that's why the tissue or cell is not utilizing the oxygen although the delivery of oxygen to the cell is adequate amount in normal amount so whenever the question is in which type of hypoxia the oxygen delivery at the cellular level is adequate okay is adequate is normal your answer is histotoxic kind of hypoxia yes very very also yes very very also very good very good okay so very very also got it got it okay so all of you 
हाउ टू रिमेम्बर दिस अगेन द डिस्कशन इज लाइक दिस कि यू हैव डू गिव ए लिटिल मोर टाइम हियर सो वेन एवर आई से ओके सो लुक एट हियर सपोज दिस इज योर लंग दिस इज योर लंग ओके एंड दिस इज योर सर्कुलेशन दिस इज योर सर्कुलेशन सो दिस इज द आर्टरियल सिस्टम आर्टरियल सिस्टम एंड दिस इज योर टिश्यू दिस इज योर टिश्यू and this is your venous system got it so you know that normally oxygen from lungs it will reach at the level of blood then this oxygen will travel through this arterial blood and it will be released at the level of tissue now if there is any problem at the level of this lung or at the level of this diffusion of oxygen then it is going to produce hypoxic hypoxia hypoxic hypoxia so suppose देर इज़ अ प्रॉब्लम एट द लेवल ऑफ लंग लंग में डिफ्यूशन नहीं हो रहा है लंग फाइब्रोसिस हो गया लंग में एडिमा हो गया ओके न्यूमोनिया हो गया सो दिस ऑक्सीजन डिफ्यूशन विल बी हेम्पर और सपोज जो ए आर आप ब्रीदिंग कर रहे हो ओके यू आर इन ए हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड कंडीशन सो यू आर ब्रीदिंग आ ए आर हुई कंटेन लेस अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन ऑल दीज आर पार्ट ऑफ हाइपॉक्सिक हाइपॉक्सिया सो इसलिए द बॉटम लाइन ऑफ हाइपॉक्सिक हाइपॉक्सिया इज देर इज डिक्रीज इन पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन द आर्टरियल ब्लड ओके देन फर्स्ट को छोड़ दो अभी हाइपोक्सिया के पास छोड़ दो सो दे आर शुड नॉट बी एनी प्रॉब्लम अप टू द लेवल ऑफ दिस डिफ्यूशन बट देर इज प्रॉब्लम एट द लेवल ऑफ आर्टरियल ब्लड व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम एट द लेवल ऑफ आर्टरियल ब्लड इफ द हीमोग्लोबिन इज लेस एट द लेवल ऑफ आर्टरियल ब्लड देन दिस इज नथिंग बट एनिमिक हाइपोक्सिया सो इफ आई आस्क यू इन केस ऑफ एनिमिक हाइपोक्सिया व्हाट विल हैपन टू द पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन योर आंसर विल बी पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विल बी नॉर्मल बिकॉज मैंने क्या बोला कि अप टू द लेवल ऑफ लंग अप टू द लेवल ऑफ डिफ्यूशन देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम बट प्रॉब्लम इज एट द लेवल ऑफ आर्टरियल ब्लड हीमोग्लोबिन कम हो गया सो पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज नॉर्मल बट हीमोग्लोबिन नहीं है ना तो ऑक्सीजन को लेके कौन जाएगा टिश्यू में अगेन देर विल बी हाइपोक्सिया एंड दैट इज एनिमिक हाइपोक्सिया थर्ड इज दैट एवरी थिंग इज नॉर्मल अप टू दिस लेवल एवरी थिंग इज नॉर्मल अप टू दिस लेवल मीन्स हीमोग्लोबिन इज ऑल्सो नॉर्मल पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑल्सो नॉर्मल बट द ब्लड इज नॉट रीचिंग एट द लेवल ऑफ टिश्यू एडिकुएटली सपोज एक पर्सन का हार्ट फेलियर हो गया हार्ट इज नॉट पंपिंग ब्लड सो हाउ द ब्लड विल रीच टू द टिश्यू ब्लड कम जाएगा वेन एवर द ब्लड इज गोइंग लेस टू द लेवल ऑफ टिश्यू बट हीमोग्लोबिन में कभी कोई कमी नहीं है एंड पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन भी नॉर्मल है ब्लड में देन दैट टाइप ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया इज नोन एज स्टैगनेंट हाइपोक्सिया स्टैगनेंट हाइपोक्सिया राइट ओके एंड वेन दिस टिश्यू इज डेड देन दिस काइंड ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया इज नोन एज हिस्टोटॉक्सिक kind of hypoxia so in histotoxic hypoxia everything will be normal but tissue is dead tissue is not taking oxygen this is the in brief that you have to remember about different types of hypoxia detail version again not possible here i am sorry for that okay but you have to remember at least this now here next question bolo answer batao if a radius of a blood vessel is double radius of a blood vessel so if the radius is r and that r is changes to 2r so we all know that by poiseuille's hagen formula resistance is equal to ye formula hai according to poiseuille's hagen formula resistance is equal to 8 eta l by pi r to the power 4 so this eta is the viscosity of the blood this l is the length of the blood vessel and this r is the radius so basically this r resistance is inversely proportionate to radius to the power 4 so to the power 4 means just this 2 r to the power 4 so 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 that is 16 all of you have given correct answer okay 16 time getting my point so twice ho gaya na radius double ho gaya so means twice increase ho gaya so 2 to the power 4 what is that 2 to the power 4 is nothing but 16 that is answer in this question okay remember this name of the book which book hypoxia abhi book padhne ka time nahi hai एम सी क्यू करो बस ओके नॉर्मल एन एन गैप ओके कितना आंसर नॉर्मल एन एन गैप सो नॉर्मल एन एन गैप का फॉर्मूला जो हम लोग जानते हैं बेसिकली दैट इज एन आयन गैप इज इक्वल टू सोडियम सम ऑफ द बुक्स आर सेइंग पोटासियम को भी लेना चाहिए बट सोडियम माइनस क्लोराइड प्लस 
बाई कार्बोनेट यही तो है ओके ओके ठीक है सो नॉर्मल एन एन गैप इज सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व मिली मोल पर लीटर ओके सिंगल लाइन क्वेश्चन सिंगल लाइन आंसर सो नो फर्दर डिस्कशन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सेवेंटी ईयर ओल्ड मैन इज ब्रॉड टू द इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट आ लॉन्ग हिस्ट्री हैज बीन गिवन ओके एंड देन द क्वेश्चन इज वेरी पिक्यूलियर द क्वेश्चन इज हुई ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ब्रीदिंग पैटर्न है प्रोलॉन्ग इंस्पायरेटरी पैजम दैट रिसम्बल ब्रेथ होल्डिंग मीनिंग क्या बोल रहा है कि द पर्सन इज टेकिंग अ लॉन्ग इंस्पिरेशन ओके एंड देन द ब्रीदिंग स्टॉप स्पैजम हो गया सो दिस इज इंस्पिरेशन लॉन्ग इंस्पिरेशन ओके आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग इंस्पिरेशन देन देर इज स्टॉपिंग ऑफ ब्रीदिंग स्पैजम ऑफ ब्रीदिंग दिस इज टिपिकल ऑफ एवन्यूस्टिक ब्रीदिंग दिस इज टिपिकल ऑफ एवन्यूस्टिक ब्रीदिंग राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू रिमेंबर द आंसर the deep inspiration followed by stopping of breathing amnestic breathing but what about the other type of breathing i have kept the different types of breathing here so you can look at here so this is pyrometer recording if this is the normal breathing okay when there is increase in rate of the breathing increase in rate of the breathing that is known as the tachypnea when the rate is normal but there is increase in depth of the breathing then that is known as hyperpnea so tachypnea is the increased rate hypernia is the increased depth when both are increasing that is known as the kusmals breathing kusmals breathing tachypnea as well as hyperpnea theek okay? hai so that is the kusmal breathing remember okay and apart from that you also remember byers breathing and chain stroke breathing so if you follow this slide so is mein chain stroke breathing mein kya likha hai कि ग्रेजुअल इंक्रीज एंड डिक्रीज इन रेस्पिरेशन विथ पीरियड ऑफ एपनिया सो देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन रेस्पिरेशन फॉलोड बाई देर विल बी स्टॉप अगेन देर विल बी इंक्रीज इन रेस्पिरेशन दैट इज टिपिकल ऑफ चेन स्ट्रोक ब्रीदिंग एंड बायोट्स ब्रीदिंग रैपिड डीप इंस्पिरेशन ओके विथ शॉर्ट पॉज छोटा छोटा पॉज होगा एंड रैपिड इरेगुलर टाइप ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन होगा दैट इज नोन एज द बायोट्स ब्रीदिंग ओके एंड बाकी ये जो सब है यूपनिया इज द नॉर्मल ब्रीदिंग टैकिपनिया ब्रैडिपनिया हाइपरनिया वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सो दिस चेन स्ट्रोक ब्रीदिंग एंड बायट्स ब्रीदिंग यू ऑल्सो रिमेंबर कुस्मॉल ब्रीदिंग ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड ओके सो दिस टू समटाइम्स मे बी आस्ट इन योर क्वेश्चन ये हो गया हमारा क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट अब इसका आंसर बताओ फर्स्ट वाइब्रेशन सेंस फर्स्ट वाइब्रेशन सेंस इज मीडिएटेड बाई वेन एवर द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट वाइब्रेशन ओके यू हैव टू रिमेंबर टू रिसेप्टर नंबर वन पैसिनियन ओके दैट इज द फर्स्ट चॉइस इफ द पैसिनियन इज नॉट देयर सेकेंड चॉइन इज सेकेंड चॉइस इज मिस नर्स पैसिनियन एंड मिस नर्स राइट सो सी इज द आंसर एयर रिपीट क्वेश्चन सो पैसिनियन इज फॉर वाइब्रेशन बेस्ट रिसेप्टर फॉर वाइब्रेशन चलो नेक्स्ट ओके हुई ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज ट्रू अबाउट रिनल ट्यूबुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट मैक्सिमम एब्जॉर्बशन ऑकर्स इन डिजिटल ट्यूबुल फॉल्स हो गया यूरिया इज अबाउ हंड्रेड परसेंट नो फिफ्टी परसेंट रिअब्जॉर्बशन होता है पी में एच प्लस इज रिअब्जॉर्ब इन द प्रॉक्सिमल ट्यूबुल नो इट इज डिजिटल ट्यूबुल ओनली डिजिटल ट्यूबुल में होता है एंड रिअब्जॉर्बशन नहीं सिक्रीशन होता है एमाइन एसिड इज रिअब्जॉर्ब इन द प्रॉक्सिमल ट्यूबुल हंड्रेड परसेंट रिअब्जॉर्बशन ऑकर्ड हंड्रेड परसेंट रिअब्जॉर्बशन ऑकर्ड सो आंसर इज डी इन दिस क्वेश्चन वेरी गुड ओके चलो नेक्स्ट रेबिस वायरस यूजेस हुई मॉलिकुलर मोटर सो दिस इज अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन दिस इज अ डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन ओके सो यू नो कि इफ दिस इज योर न्यू रॉन इफ दिस इज योर न्यू रॉन ओके सो दिस इज द एक्जन ऑफ द दिस इज द सेल बॉडी सेल बॉडी ऑफ द न्यू रॉन एंड दिस इज द एक्जन टर्मिनल टर्मिनल ऑफ द न्यू रॉन राइट सो Inside the neuron, there will be माइक्रो टीब्यूल्स देर विल बी माइक्रो टीब्यूल्स सो दिस इज द रेलवे पाथ ऑन दिस माइक्रो टीब्यूल देर आर सर्ट एंड मॉलिकुलर मोटर हुई मूव इन द एंट्रोग्रेड डायरेक्शन दैट इज नोन एज काइने सिन काइने सिन एंड देर इज अ काइंड ऑफ मॉलिकुलर मोटर हुईज मूव इन द ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन रेट्रोग्रेड डायरेक्शन दैट इज डी वाई एन ई आई एम डाइन इन सो रेबिस वायरस जो होता है इट एंटर फ्रॉम द पेरीफेरी सपोज देर इज अ डॉग बाइट हीयर सो द रेबिस वायरस विल एंटर थ्रू हीयर 
and then it will travel down from one neuron to the other neuron and it will reach to your CNS. So it is entering from the axon terminal and it is moving on the retrograde direction. For the retrograde direction, the molecular motor is known as the dynein and for the anterograde molecular motor, the molecular motor will be kinesin. So just remember these two lines, anterograde forward direction motor kinesin, retrograde towards the cell body movement that is dynein. Chalo. Next question, oxytocin plays a role in, so we all know that milk production is done by estrogen and progesterone, oxytocin is responsible for ejection of the milk, okay. No further discussion is needed here, okay. Chalo. The major thyroxine binding protein, so thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone, major thyroid hormone binding protein, you have to remember certain protein here, teen protein ka naam yaad ragna hoga, thyroid binding globulin, transthyretin, and albumin, ye teen protein ka naam. So, this is transthyretin number one, thyroid binding globulin and third is the globulin, okay, sorry, albumin. All these three are the thyroid binding protein, but among these three, the main is the thyroid binding globulin, okay. So, you remember here, that's thyroid binding globulin, transthyretin and albumin. All these three proteins are thyroid binding protein, but the most important protein for thyroid hormone binding that is 67% of the T4 and 46% of the T3 hormone is attached to a thyroid binding globulin. Important. Next. In ORS, sodium is given along with glucose to facilitate. Okay. So, you know that from GIT, glucose absorption. GIT glucose absorptions occur by a transporter that is SGLT type 1. Previously we discussed that in kidney that is SGLT2 and SGLT1, but in GIT the glucose transporter is SGLT1. SGLT1 transport glucose along with sodium, so glucose along with sodium. So if you do not give sodium, glucose is not going to reabsorb at the level of GIT. So, simple thing is that this SGLT is nothing but a co-transporter system and the answer of this question is co-transport, very good, okay. So, not the C, okay. Whereas sodium is given along with glucose, the transporter is SGLT, SGLT is a kind of co-transporter system, okay. If you are thinking of the basolateral membrane, so this is the luminal membrane, basolateral membrane which is transport hota hai, oh hota hai glute. Glute jo aapka hoga na, that is a facilitated diffusion, but not the SGLT. SGLT is the secondary active transport, okay. SGLT is the co-transport secondary active transport system, yes. GIT has one, yes, and kidney has both one and two. So, glute hoga, so that is a facilitated diffusion. SGLT hoga, the co-transport system that is the secondary active transport, do not forget, okay. Next, okay. So, here a long history is given, okay, I am not going to read this long history. Which of the following part of the kidney must be the site of maximum water reabsorption? Maximum reabsorption always everything is proximal tubule only. So, I will directly go for this answer except maximum absorption for everything at the level of proximal tubule except the magnesium ion. Magnesium ion maximum absorption occurs at the level of thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Okay, thick ascending limb of loop of Henle mein maximum amount of magnesium reabsorption hota hai. Otherwise, every substances if I ask you maximum absorption kahan pe hota hai, PCT is the answer. Next question, in the following left ventricular pressure volume loop. So, the PV loop is basically uh, a difficult question for uh, FMG, okay. But if you look at the loop, suppose this is the x axis, this, uh, this is the x axis, volume axis and y axis is the pressure axis. You just remember like this, okay. Suppose this is A, this is B. A to B is the diastole part, okay. And here the ventricular filling is going to happen. <clears throat> then what will happen? The ventricle will contract isovolumically. So this B to C is isovolumic contraction. 
then from C to D there will be ejection there will be ejection okay and from this D to A this is isovolumic relaxation this is isovolumic <coughs> relaxation okay so now you look at the question so point C point C this is the point C point C means this is the onset of ejection this is the onset of ejection of blood from ventricle and for the ejection of the blood from ventricle to the arch of aorta will happen only and only when aortic valves open up got it so everybody has given correct answer everybody has given correct answer b aortic valve will open up and this point number d here there will be closer of the closer of aortic valves aortic valves okay closer of the aortic valve is the d okay okay so this is the thing that you have to remember in brief pv loop next question identify the moment for from the following picture very simple question so you can find out a foot bolus here just proximal to the foot bolus there is a contraction and ahead of the foot bolus there is a relaxation because of which the foot bolus is moving ahead again the same thing will happen and this is typical of forward movement peristalsis is the answer if there is multiple contraction simultaneously in part of a git suppose there is a multiple contraction ring simultaneously multiple jagame contraction then that is known as the segmentation movement is a phala option na segmentation movement suppose a diagram is given where multiple contractile ring you are getting in a small segment of intestine then that is a segmentation movement okay very good <coughs> here it is peristalsis so now here a patient presented to the er with a history of road traffic accident okay he could not speak so whenever the question is he could not speak we have already discussed that motor area broca area is damaged okay but he had no other neurological finding normal handwriting and he could understand he could understand what being asked to him so in sensory area wernicke area is normal but broca area is damaged so obvious answer is the broca area this is known as the motor aphasia this is known as the broca aphasia or motor aphasia right so this is the diagnosis of this cases is yes. okay so it helps in expression of speech that's why expression very good okay now next 58 in cardiac muscle the inhibition of the sodium potassium atph pump so what sodium potassium atph pump does right so we all know sodium potassium atph pump it throw three molecule of sodium out of the cell and two molecule of potassium inside the cell so basically sodium potassium atph pump is throwing more positive charge outside and less positive charge is ent entering means sodium potassium atph pump normally causes negativity of the membrane potential when it is active now if you inhibit this pump if you inhibit this pump kya hoga so jo inactive jo negativity inside tha jyada negativity jo inside tha that negativity will be vanished out positive ho jayega and that positivity is known as the depolarization little bit depolarization will be there getting my point so sodium potassium atph pump is throwing more positive charge so less positive charge is entering in the cell so inside of the cell will be negative but whenever you inhibit the sodium potassium atph pump so this negativity will be converted into positivity that is depolarization got it okay next question cortico spinal tract crosses at bolo so cortico spinal tract cross kahan pe karta hai your answer will be spinal cord and medullary junction spino spino medullary junction spino medullary junction pe ye cross karta hai so spino medullary junction means your lower medulla will be the better answer in this cases very good very good chalo next question so next question which of the following hormone regulate serum calcium level very easy question for all of you look at calcitonin it decreases calcium level parathyroid increases calcium level vitamin d also increases calcium level so answer is all of the above
okay no 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 look at the question clearly b is not the answer b obviously answer but a b c d all can regulate the calcium balance so all of this hormone can regulate calcium balance the best answer is all of the above all of the above hai na thoda sa dekhna hoga chalo next one so next one which of the following cells secrete surfactant in the lung we have already discussed we are not taking much of the time type 2 pneumocyte right next question a mother complains of breast cramp during breastfeeding her child which of the following is responsible for this we have just discussed that ejection of the milk is done by a important hormone and that is oxytocin whenever this oxytocin is not adequately released then there will be cramping at the level of breast during breastfeeding so answer is oxytocin this question has been repeated multiple times in your exam please please note down this okay very good next reflex responsible for tachycardia during right atrial distension so this is right atrium okay whenever blood is returning to right atrium to a very high level suppose the more amount of blood is returning to the right atrium right atrium will be stretched and whenever this right atrium is stretched whenever the right atrium is stretched the reflex that will be activated is known as bain beige reflex bain beige reflex will increases the heart rate of this person so answer is bain beige reflex here basal jerry's reflex cushing reflex j reflex in all these reflex there will be bradycardia decrease in heart rate decrease in heart rate decrease in heart rate okay so the detailed discussion of this reflex is not possible in this short class but please please remember that all of these reflex basal jerry is cushing reflex j reflex sab mein bradycardia hota hai tachycardia happens in case of bain beige reflex whenever your right atrium is stretch yes basal jerry is bradycardia cushing reflex is also bradycardia hypertension with bradycardia with irregular respiration that is cushing reflex and j reflex is similar to chemo receptor reflex or basal jerry reflex is maybe bradycardia hota hai right so tachycardia is by bain beige reflex chalo next a young patient sustained head injury okay okay now there is a long symptoms he is extremely curious okay tries everything forget everything rapidly keeps everything in mouth okay eat huge amount of eating hyper orality hyper sexuality extreme curious koi fear nahi hai iske pehle just i was discussing that amygdala is responsible for controlling your emotion and fear response whenever amygdala is destroyed your fear will be less so you are trying to explore everything क्या है देख लेते हैं क्या है देख लेते हैं सब जगह में जाकर हाथ लगा रहा हूँ एवरी थिंग यू आर टेकिंग इन टू माउथ ओके यू आर टेकिंग ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ फूड हाइपर ओरालिटी हाइपर सेक्शुअलिटी प्लासिडिटी एंड दिस क्यूरोसिटी दिस इज टिपिकल ऑफ क्लूभर बूसी सिंड्रोम आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू नो दिस सिंड्रोम क्लूभर बूसी सिंड्रोम ओके के बी एस एंड क्लूभर बूसी सिंड्रोम इज ड्यू टू डैमेज ऑफ दिस amygdala okay so please please note down these two important syndrome one is the kluver bussy syndrome and one is the korsakoff psychosis okay so in case of kluver bussy syndrome bilateral destruction of the temporal lobe along with temporal lobe will be destroyed along with your amygdala has to be destroyed that is the kluver bussy syndrome and korsakoff psychosis it has also been asked in multiple exam question mammillary body is going to damage mammillary body is going to damage no initially it is very exciting hyper orality hyper sexuality okay but later on it become a very debilitating disease okay so don't lose your amygdala your everything will be lost okay chal next next question is as filtrate flows through the pct the concentration of all of the following decreases so whenever uh, a solution whenever the solution is passing through this proximal tubule okay there will be reabsorption of multiple substances so what will happen the concentration of amino acid concentration of sodium concentration of water everything will be reduced as except one electrolyte that is chloride kyunki chloride ka reabsorption proximal part of the pct mein zyada hota nahi hai so that's why answer of this question is chloride okay so everything will be reduced gradually but chloride concentration will increase a little bit in the proximal part okay chalo next 
What is the reason that hemoglobin cannot pass through the glomerulus in a normal physiological state? Now, why hemoglobin is not passing through your glomerulus? Very simple question. Why ki hemoglobin kis kandar hota hai? Hemoglobin is present inside the RBC. Can RBC pass through your filtration membrane? Answer is no. But if the RBC is lysis, RBC is uh, ruptured, then hemoglobin will come out and then the hemoglobin will appear in the urine that is known as the hemoglobinuria. So normal case, mein, why hemoglobin is not appearing in your urine, why hemoglobin is not filtered at the glomerulus, your simple answer is it is remain inside the RBC. But neither of this statement is saying that although first one large molecule bound with another protein, this is not correct. Okay. It is not in the plasma, it is not bound with the plasma protein, it is inside the RBC, that's why. So, in my opinion, none of the above is the best answer. So, why hemoglobin does not appear in your urine? Answer is because it present within the RBC. Okay. If it is coming out of the RBC, then it is going to appear in the urine. Hemoglobin urea jo hota hai, okay? So, answer ye hona chahi, none of the above is the best answer in my opinion, okay? Is get attached to the positively charged, this is not the correct answer here. It is attached to protein, not the correct answer here. So, none of the above is the best answer. Chalo. Next, this is a very common question. Here, a patient presented with symptoms as shown is the image below, okay? So, number one is showing the site of lesion and the image is showing same sided loss of proprioception, vibration, discriminatory charge and opposite side pain and temperature is lost. Same side, proprioception, vibration, fine touch and opposite side pain temperature is lost. This is typical of brown sequward syndrome. This is typical of brown sequward syndrome. Okay? Yes, yes. Revision is the key to success. I always say revision is the key to success. Okay. So the other syndrome that is given here, na, this Deserin Rose syndrome, this you have to remember only one word about this. This is known as the thalamic pain syndrome. This is also known as the thalamic pain syndrome. Right? Thalamic pain syndrome is Deserin Rose syndrome. And other this Weber syndrome and Oilenberg syndrome, anatomy map ko bola hoga. But anyway, Weber syndrome is also known as the midbrain stroke syndrome and Wellenberg syndrome is lateral medullary syndrome. This is a difficult, we are not going to ask for a FMG of this MCQs, but sometimes they may ask. That's why I have kept this information here. Okay, Chalo, next. Next question is here, following complete ileal and partial jejunal resection. So, we all know that the absorption of this vitamin B12 occurs from the terminal ileum. Okay, terminal ileum. So, absorption of vitamin B12 is happening from terminal ileum. So, whenever this part is removed, vitamin B12 deficiency is going to happen. Great. Okay, next. Which of the following conditions shift the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the left? Okay. So, we know that you have to remember this important information, right shift ka cause hota hai, increase in temperature, increase in carbon dioxide, increase in H plus ion means acidosis and increase in 2, 3, D, P, G. So, obvious thing is that if there is alkalosis, then there will be left shifting of the curve, right? Not only that, left shifting also occur in case of fetal hemoglobin, okay? In case of carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide poisoning and third is the storage of blood in the blood bank. Whenever you store blood in the blood bank, then also there will be left set of the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, okay? So, these are the minimum important information that you have to remember in this question. Next, if the diameter of an artery was found to be reduced to one third, so diameter radius or diameter whatever R and now it is reduced to one third of R, 
so one third of r what i'm going to do i am going to put to the power 4 here so 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 3 to the power 4 and that is nothing but 81 okay very simple we have already applied this formula okay poisel is again formula so answer here is 81 times so just remember kitna double ho hai or kitna kam ho hai okay if it is half so if it is half then 1 2 means 2 to the power 4 if it is 1 third then 3 to the power 4 okay and if it is 1 fourth then 4 to the power 4 this way you have to simply answer this question in your exam got it okay Chalo, next question insulin act on glucose metabolism by very tricky question look at this insulin act on glucose metabolism by increases facilitated diffusion of glucose and decreases pump so we all know that in presence of insulin if this is your cell membrane in presence of insulin glucose will enter inside the cell okay glucose will enter inside the cell but how the glucose is going to ent enter inside the cell in presence of glucose in presence of insulin insulin stimulate a glute insulin stimulate a glute which glute glute 4 GLUT4 and GLUT mediated glucose transport is which kind of glucose transport facilitated diffusion I told you just before this that if the glucose is reabsorbed by SGLT sodium glucose linkage transporter then that is secondary active transport but if the glucose is entering through GLUT then that is facilitated diffusion and insulin stimulate GLUT4 GLUT4 any kind of GLUT is nothing but your facilitated diffusion and GLUT4 is present in the skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle and fat cells. Hmm? Okay, Chalo. Next, which of the following enzyme is responsible for conversion of T4 to T3? So, T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, so look at here, T4, it can be converted into T3, that is the active form and it can be converted into reverse T3. RT3 is the known as the reverse T3. This is the inactive form, inactive form, right. Now, in both the cases, the enzyme is known as the deiodinase enzyme. D, okay, iodinase enzyme. Deiodinase enzyme, okay. Now, deiodinase enzyme, two prokar ka hota hai. One is 5 prime deiodinase and second one is 5 deiodinase 5 prime or 5 dash deiodinase this is the enzyme which is responsible for activation of thyroid hormone activation of thyroid hormone and 5 deiodinase is responsible for inactivation of thyroid hormone so for activation of thyroid hormone the main enzyme is type 1 deiodinase and for deactivation the main enzyme is type 3 D iodinase okay so this detailed version 3.5 point that I can discuss but that is not required and uh, for the MCQ or for just before exam you have to remember that activation require 5 prime D iodinase the main enzyme is type 1 D iodinase and inactivation require inactivation require 5 D iodinase 5 D iodinase is mainly by type 3 D so here type 1 deiodinase is the answer got it everybody okay so yoga apka a is the answer in this question next question which of the following effect of puberty are not mediated by estrogen <coughs> read and you will be able to answer so we know that the growth of the hairs axillary and pubic hair they are under the effect of androgen that's why this hair growth is not part of the estrogen action during the onset of puberty okay so ye pediatrics may be aapko padaya hoga tanner staging mein and this is the same thing in physiology the hair growth is part of the androgenic effect not by the estrogenic effect that's all next question what is the affinity of carbon monoxide good question what is the affinity of carbon monoxide to hemoglobin in comparison to oxygen you have to remember the number that is 250 times so 200 to 250 times okay is the affinity this is the only thing okay Chalo. next which of the following would help in explaining the mechanism of action of ANP ANP hormone atrial natriuretic peptide hormone 
it is secreted from atrium whenever the atrium is stretched ANP is going to released ANP hormone nitric oxide and endothelium derived relaxation factor all of them we have already discussed they act through okay CGMP second messenger so this CGMP is the answer here okay so please note down a basic minimum thing that you must have to remember okay chalo next which of the following is involved as a secondary messenger in the mechanism of gastric acid secretion okay so uh, again this is a question um, which is not very important one okay second messenger in gastric acid secretion two second messenger are there one is the calcium can be a second messenger or CAMP can be a second messenger if the parietal cell parietal cell is going to release the acid if the parietal cell is stimulated by histamine then the second messenger is CAMP okay so when the histamine is stimulating the parietal cell then the second messenger is CAMP when the acetylcholine or when the gastrin is stimulating the parietal cell then the second messenger is calcium so here the calcium is not in the second messenger option so only answer that is possible is CAMP getting my point so the question is about gastric acid secretion gastric acid secretion is done by parietal cell parietal cell ke liye three main stimulus hota hai ek hota hai acetylcholine ek hota hai gastrin ek hota hai histamine acetylcholine and gastrin if it is stimulating the parietal cell then the second messenger will be calcium into the cell and if the histamine is stimulating then the second messenger is CAMP so CAMP is the answer in this question CCKB2 CCKB2 is the receptor for CCKB2 receptor is for gastrin receptor this is the receptor for gastrin okay CCKB2 is not the answer in this question CCKB2 is a receptor for gastrin okay so gastrin when it is stimulating the receptor what is the receptor CCKB2 what is the second messenger calcium is the second messenger that is the thing you have to remember here got it now this is the last question cervical dilation and delivery on uterine contraction is similar to which of the following mechanism this is a little bit tricky question question ko ghuma diya hai cervical dilation okay whenever happens it causes a positive feedback reaction positive feedback reaction hai na so whenever you stretch the cervix it will stimulate a neural reflex that will produce more contraction of the uterus more contraction means head will be more protruded more stretching and more stretching means again positive feedback and that will lead to childbirth so you know childbirth or this cervical dilation and contraction during labor is a positive feedback phenomenon i have to look at that among all of this example which one is also a positive feedback phenomena so fsh secretion by anterior pituitary this is a negative feedback phenomena water retention by adh adh osmolality increase hoga to adh badega adh badega to osmolality ghat jayega means this is also a negative feedback milk ejection by oxytocin is a positive feedback phenomena so the answer of this question here is milk ejection by oxytocin got it so these are all the important questions which has been asked in the last 5 year so if you are planning to leave physiology i will ask please at least remember the answer of this question and the little discussion that i have made here that will be helpful for your preparation okay so this is all for today's class i hope you get some information which will be beneficial for your exam best of luck for your exam thank you so much for listening thank you thank you thank you and not all in your fingertip but yes this kind of confidence is required i will ask you please revise once again all the information that we have discussed here they are the very crucial information please revise at least once again before your exam okay otherwise you will forget so this is all for today thank you so much bye bye take care